Good morning and Good morning. welcome to St. Stephen on the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. Uh, I'm Carol Cleland and I'm going to make a few announcements. The first of which is to welcome our Boy Scout leaders this morning. It is Boy Scout Sunday. So um, I wanted to say that, gosh, the Boy Scout troop has been chartered here for many years. I don't even know how many, but it's Troop 180 uh, and there's the Cub Scout pack as well. Uh, and we just want to, you all to know that we're very proud of you and thank the leaders and the scouts and the parents especially for everything that they put into helping us here at the congregation as well. So it's a twofold uh, uh, proposition, I should say. <laughs> so thank you and you're welcome. And also to thank Cheryl Nydig. Uh, she is our scout representative and she's back there, but she does, uh, keeps us informed uh, of all of your wonderful activities. Uh, secondly, I want to have really good news. Pastor Joel will be coming back next Sunday to start leading worship with us. He is doing better. Uh, however, uh, his doctors tell him that he needs to ease back into his ministry. And that might be a little difficult for Pastor Joel. So we have to help him uh, ease back in. So we'll be having a meeting with uh, our Savior Lutheran Church uh, some of the executive members of council with their executive members and Pastor Joel on Tuesday evening just to determine how we can ease him back uh, jointly. So uh, we're so happy that he is able to uh, come back at this point in time, uh, especially with the Lenten season coming. So that's good news. Uh, let's see here. Also, Lynn, Emma wanted me to tell you that there's a a big uh, pan of utensils sitting out there on the table by the coffee. Uh, we've had more than we ever need in the kitchen. <laughs> and the drawers are overflowing. So if you need some kitchen utensils, help yourselves. They're out there on the counter. That'll always be nice. Uh, today, we also welcome Dr. Carl Sigletes, yes, uh, to lead our worship service. And thank you for coming, uh, Carl. Uh, Carl's a pastoral intern for the Lower Susquehanna Synod, and it's part of his coursework uh, for his time at the seminary. And I'm assuming that's uh, the United Seminary in Gettysburg. I'm actually at Luther Seminary in Minneapolis. Are you interested? Oh, great. I didn't know that. He's at Luther Seminary in Minneapolis. So wonderful. Oh, well, yeah. Good. Well, welcome, uh, Vicar, and thank you for leading us this morning. <laughs> you do live in the area, right? <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, are there any prayer requests at this point? Yes. Roger Myers. Oh, Terry Myers. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay, we'll pray for Roger. Yes, certainly. Okay. Yes. So it's John, and what's this last name? Uh, I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> John from New Kingston. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Brandy needs continued prayers. Okay. Continue prayers for Brandy. Good. We're good to hear that. Great. Anything else? Okay. Uh, Jenny has an announcement. Ashton also needs continued prayers. Sorry. We'll do Ashton as well. <laughs> Good morning from Youth and Family Ministry. Good morning. good morning. It's good to be back after a long while. So I just had a couple of announcements for you guys. I wanted to let you know that the Winterfest and the extravaganza photos are on the Youth Google Drive. So that link has been put out this week with Kevin's email. So please look for that link and go online and take a moment to look through all those photos. I know there are a lot of photos on there, but that will help you get immersed into the experiences that we got to enjoy and 
Share them with any youth that you might have in your lives because that's a great way to get them energized and get them excited about the experiences that they get to look forward to coming up in their lives too. So that's a great way to get them motivated into participating in future activities as well. So please take some time to look at those pictures, share them with your family, share them with friends that might be interested in participating too in other events. In addition to that, we have our next FUSE meeting coming up on February 18th at one o'clock here at St. Stephen. So FUSE meetings are for any youth that are ages zero through 18 and any adult spiritual leaders in their life. So that's anybody that has a spiritual uh, impact in their life. So that could be parents, that could be friends, aunts, uncles, neighbors, any adult in their life that just has a spiritual guidance in their life that wants to come along with them. And just as a reminder, they do not have to be a member of St. Stephen. So you can be any child and attend any youth group in any church. So please feel free to invite youth from any other church, youth that just happens to be a neighbor or a family member or a friend of the family, anybody you want to, to these youth meetings. There is a meal that is served at these meetings and then we typically do like a game or some sort of lesson and then an activity along with them. So please feel free to come with and that is the FUSE meeting February 18th at 1 p.m. Thank you. with the praises. Uh, let's uh, state our mission together as printed in the bulletin. We respond, respond to Christ's love by feeding those who hunger in body, mind, and spirit. And now we'll prepare for worship with the praises. <laughs>
please rise in body or spirit for the confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one of none other. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant. Renew your creation. Restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. Amen. We sing together then our opening hymn, number 414, Holy God, we praise your name. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always, and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let 
let us pray to the Lord. Lord help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. from the book of Isaiah. The Judeans in exile have a good reason to be hopeful. The one who will bring them to freedom is the God who created the world, the God who subdues the rulers of the earth and gives strength to those who are weary. The reading, the reading from the prophet Isaiah. This is Isaiah. He's explaining stuff to everybody. <laughs> have you not heard? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretch out the curtain, the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in. Who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing? Scarcely are they planted Scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my regal? says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these, you who brings out the host and numbers them calling all by name, because he is great in strength. Mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my might, my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. He, uh, his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like <clears throat> eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
to sing praises to our God. How blessed <coughs> God with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem and gathers the exiles of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to God's wisdom. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music upon the harp to our God. provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they cry. But finds pleasure in those who fear the Lord, in those who await God's steadfast love, second lesson this morning comes from Corinthians chapter 9. God entrusted Paul with responsibility of bringing the gospel to devised people. <coughs> Hence, the focus of Paul's ministry is not his own rights or privileges as an apostle, but the privilege of serving God by freely sharing the good news of Christ with others. Paul was the most talkative if I proclaim the gospel, gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I become as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law I become as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I become as one outside the law. Though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I become weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I might share in its blessings. Word of God, <clears throat> word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Congregation, please rise for the reading of the gospel. <laughs> A reading from the Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Context matters. Context matters. It's the first thing that I learned when I started. My, um, in addition to serving a congregation, I also am a middle school music teacher. I teach band and classroom music for a local school district. And when I was first hired by the district, I was hired the day before the first in service day. I had my final interview on Monday, the teachers started on Tuesday. So I interviewed, I'd interviewed all across the entire state of Pennsylvania, and I was like, I really, really, really want a job. And so I interviewed, and I was pulling into a Chick-fil-A drive-thru, and uh, my phone went off and it said, this town where my school is, and I said, ooh, back up, park, pick up the phone. They said, we'd like to have you teach at our school. I said, great. They said, you don't have to show up tomorrow. I'm like, no, I'll show up tomorrow. Because I knew that there was only three days until the kids showed up. So I showed up, and they activated my email that day. And immediately, I realized that I had absolutely no context for what I was doing. I had a roster of band students. I didn't know what instrument they played. I had no curriculum, no repertoire, nothing. Absolutely not. I didn't even know what school instruments we had at the time. I had no context for what I was doing. So I get emails from parents. Johnny doesn't want to play in band anymore. And I'd say, who's Johnny? What instrument does Johnny play? I don't even know Johnny yet because he hasn't come to school yet. So I know absolutely nothing. And I'm expected to respond in context and know what's going on. I'm supposed to know that Johnny plays the trombone and he had an XYZ experience the year before. And, but I didn't. I didn't know the context. I learned that when something happens in the classroom, you should probably call home before the kid gets home. Why? Because context is important. My story, their story, sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're different, right? What happened from my perspective versus the kid's perspective versus the other kid's perspective? So it's always good to share your context with others. And in our letter from Paul that he wrote to the church in Corinth, he, we can argue a lot about what Paul's trying to say in this letter, but I think that the big theme that Paul's trying to say is that context matters. You got to know the people that you're serving. You got to know the people that you're working with. Because if you don't have context... You don't have anything. It's one of the reasons I've learned that being a supply preacher is very difficult. You have no context. What did you talk about last week? I don't know. What are you going to talk about next week? I don't know. Context is important. And it's this context that I want to talk about today because Mark is not as wordy as Paul by any stretch. I would say that of the four Gospels, Luke is if the story of Jesus was a musical. It's got great canticles, great stuff. Matthew likes to tell stories and notate history and give lots of details. John is that uncle that tells you the things that you didn't know that you wanted to know, but it all kind of makes sense at the end. And Mark is like, 
just the facts. This is what happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. So when I got this reading for this week, I, I texted all of my mentors and I said, well, what are you preaching on this week? And they're like, good luck. <laughs> good luck. I got nothing for you. And I said, all right. Because there's so little, but also so much in this short passage of Mark. And a lot of the, the things that I think are really important in this uh, passage from Mark don't actually sink in with our context. We're reading a translation of Mark's gospel. And so when we take translations at face value, sometimes we miss the important things that might leave the fun clues, like might be more apparent in other gospel stories. So I want to focus on one verse. And I do this saying that as Lutherans, we believe that Scripture interprets Scripture, meaning that you can't like just take one verse and say, this is what this means. You got to take the whole thing. And I, but I want to take this one verse and I want to connect it to the whole thing because I think it helps tell a different story, a different context for the healing of Simon's mother-in-law. So I want to take a look at verse 31. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve them. When I first read that verse this week, I was like, oh no, like what, what does that mean? Lifted up. What does lifted up mean? Does that mean like when you're helping someone out of bed, you lift them up? What does that mean that like he was like lifting her whole body up? And serve. What, what does serve mean? Does serve mean to go and fulfill traditional gender roles, to, to clean, to cook? What, this seems problematic to me. But as I was listening and doing some research, the Greek translation to these words can be really helpful for us to understand the context. When Mark says that he came and took and lifted her up, the verb lifted her up is actually the same verb that is used in a story in Mark that I'm pretty sure you all know. It's the same verb that means resurrected in Mark 16 that we read on Easter. Jesus didn't just pick her up or physically touch her to make her well. Jesus resurrected this woman. His healing had resurrection is what the author is trying to tell us, what Mark is trying to tell us. And when we look at it in this way, we see this connection to this really small seemingly story in Mark about this healing of one of the only family members of the disciples we hear about and how it connects to the bigger story of Mark, to the resurrection of Jesus, to the good news, the gospel message. Jesus healed her and she was resurrected. The next verb that I found quite interesting was the serve. What does it mean to serve? And the Greek word that is used there is diakonia. Diakonia. And it is not service as in like, I am getting paid to do a job. It's not service as in, I am going to... Uh, help you out at home to, to host you. It's service as in service for the mission of God in the world. It's the same service that at the beginning of Mark, which you'll probably read about as we start our Lenten journey, we've got the angels serving Jesus when he's out in the wilderness for 40 days. It's the same type of service. Simon's mother-in-law was healed, was resurrected, and because of that, she wants to serve her community. Isn't this a great image for how our faith should be lived out? I think that it's a great reading to have on Boy Scout Sunday, where we have youth, adults, leaders that are out serving their community. I think it's great when you're in a congregation like St. Stephen's, whose mission is so focused on service. This idea that because we are resurrected, because we are saved, we are called to service. I'm a seminarian student at Luther Seminary, and no, I don't live in Minneapolis. I just fly out there every couple times. I live in Mechanicsburg. Um, 
and I'm studying to be a deacon. And most people, when I tell them this, they, they ask, well, what's, what does that mean? I don't know. What is this deacon? And deacon comes from this idea of diaconia, right? We've got pastors, which we're familiar with. They're ministers of word and sacrament. They are called to preach the word and to preside over the Lord's Supper and over baptisms. And as a deacon, I feel called to word and service. This idea that because God died... Because Jesus Christ died and was raised again, I am called to serve the world, to serve the world in God's mission. This idea of going out because, not because I have to, not because we have to, but because we are saved, we serve. And Simon's mother-in-law gets it. She gets it. In that one sentence, Mark, I think, is saying that she gets it. Resurrection equals service to the world. Now, the disciples don't get it. They go out and hunt Jesus. Why have you gone away? Where are you going? It takes them till the end of the story to figure it out. And then some. Because Jesus in Mark's gospel is again and again providing little hints They're not as direct as the other Gospels, but those little hints about what is the mystery of our faith, that because Christ died for our sins, we are called to serve our neighbors. This is the good news. Amen. Let us stand and sing together our hymn of the day. Number 344, All Glory, Love, and Honor.
Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Everlasting God, you bring your healing power to the church. Give your church a spirit of unity and prayer that we discern your way for us in the world. God of grace, receive our prayer. Creator of the ends of the earth, you make the grass grow and send rain for the soil. Bring your creation into harmony and balance. Give animals their food and provide healthy shelter for your people. Inspire us to honor the miraculous beauty of all you have made. God of grace, receive our prayer. God without equal, your steadfast love endures forever. Bring the leaders, elected officials, and peacekeepers of our towns and countries into understanding and unity. Guide them to serve with compassion and understanding. God of grace, receive our prayer. God who strengthens, you lift up with your hand any who are suffering. Heal those who are brokenhearted and strengthen the weak and all in need. God of grace, receive our prayer. God who gives power to the faint, challenge us to share the faith stories of what God has done in our lives. Open us to receive the unique ways God is at work in your people, especially those whose perspectives challenge our own. God of grace, receive our prayer. God who calls each star by name, we remember all who have died. Shelter all who mourn with your mercy and care and give us hope in your promised salvation. God of grace, receive our prayer. God, our healer, we pray for all those who have need of healing this day, for those lifted before us this day, for those we name silently in our heart, for Roger, Ashton, John, Brandy, and all others who need your care. God of grace, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And, and also, also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. 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 Instead of the Canticle of Thanksgiving that's printed in your bulletin, we're going to do them that's more familiar. It's number 313 in your red hymnal, O Lord, now let your servant. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. With this being Boy Scout Sunday, we thought it would be appropriate to offer a word of blessing and thanksgiving for our troop leaders and for their pack. Friends in Christ, today we give thanks to God and we seek God's blessing as we gather to bless Troop and Pack 180 to the praise and glory of God. The Lord be with you and, and also, also with you. you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. You made the whole earth for your glory. All creation praises you. We lift our voices to the song of heaven and earth, of things seen and unseen. You stretched out the heavens like a tent. You divided the day from the night. You appointed times and seasons for work and rest, for tearing down and building up. You blessed your people through all generations and guided them in life and death. Abraham and Sarah, Moses and Miriam, Isaiah and all the prophets, Mary, mother of our Lord, 
Peter, James, John, and all the apostles, and all saints and witnesses in your church of ages past, in whom your spirit spoke and moved. We give you thanks, O God, for Troop and Pack 180, and we ask that to bless the fruits of their work. Grant us faith to know your gracious purpose in all things, and continue your blessings to them and us through the bounty of your creation, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We sing together then our closing hymn, number 864, Praise My Soul, the God of Heaven. Go in peace, serve in love. Thanks be to God. We will.